Hello everyone, welcome to today's edition of RD2RD Live. I'm Megan Boitano, your host, and today I'm joined by Libby Rothschild, and we are going to tackle the topic of Instagram, and not just kind of the nuts and bolts of what Instagram is, but really getting into growing your following and getting them engaged, because as we know, social media is a really valuable business building tool, but using the right strategies allows us to leverage it better. So I've been following Libby for quite some time and I'm just delighted that she said yes to come on to the live show to share her wisdom with all of you today. So first, Libby, thank you so much for um, coming on today. I know you're very busy. Thank you for having me and I'm, I'm so happy uh, that I could be here with you today. And Megan, I, you know, you and I have been in connection on social and we've had several phone calls in the last year or so. So it's really nice to chat here on this platform on Facebook. So thank you for having me as a guest. Absolutely. So I like to dive in quickly. I know we're all pressed for time typically, um, but just to kind of a little bit more of a background about, you know, I mentioned the live show, but that my passion is to give dietitians who've achieved success in the online world, whether that's selling digital courses or Instagram or writing eBooks to give a voice that um, we have a lot of wisdom that we've learned, but we don't always have an easy way to share that. So this show is a chance to share what we've learned, answer questions, and kind of create that, you know, that dialogue with a dietitian's voice, um, not necessarily, you know, a digital marketer or somebody else. So it's really, it's not about perfection. It's not that you have all the answers. Um, sometimes people are like, well, I don't know enough to come on the live show, but that everybody's experience, um, no matter where you are in your journey, adds value um, for people. So um, just kind of that little bit of background of why I do why I do this show. Great. So, yeah, yeah. So let's kick things off. And I always like to start a little bit with the story about your career pathway, because most of us didn't end up where we are on a straight line. Um, to tell us a little bit about your career journey and what led you to kind of become this Instagram guru. Yeah, so I've been a dietitian for, I believe, for uh, almost five years now, and my first career is in fitness, mm -hmm. so I was, uh, have been a personal trainer for over 10 years now, and I had a business uh, doing independent personal training. I also worked for some fancy uh, fitness clubs like Equinox, which mm -hmm. was great, so I learned a lot of business acumen and business skills with verbal communication through my first career. So I was always interested in combining the two, thinking that I wanted to go into private practice. And I actually decided to first do some clinical work. My master's is in clinical nutrition as well. And from that, I did a lot of collaborative work and efforts with uh, doctors, physicians, and medical students and medical residents in nutrition. And so I've, I've done a lot of work with bridging the gap between nutrition and medicine and teaching. And then I also decided to carry over that concept with dietitians and collaboration. And so that's, uh, I used Instagram to tell my story. And I just started by wanting to explain a little bit about what I, what I did with doctors and how I was using, you know, intercollaborative care to promote nutrition. And then after, uh, you know, some time on Instagram, I can say maybe like, after about three or four months, I decided to help dietitians. And then after about six to 10 months, I decided to really hone in on helping dietitians learn from one another and support the concept of collaboration yes. um, in order to empower the career and themselves. Because just like you said, you know, we all have a voice and mm -hmm. it's powerful to hear other people's journeys, no matter where we are in that career, whether we're brand new or whether we've been in RD for 10 plus years. Yeah. And I think um, I love that. Sometimes we don't value the skills we got, we've we developed through, whether it's working in clinical or in fitness, that, that toolkit of skills that you're building, it may not seem initially transferable into whatever, you know, your current, your current career goals are. But I love how you kind of laid out for us how some of that was able to, to transfer over. And, you know, one of the reasons why I was so excited to... Um, talk with you is the skill you have with not with kind of 
challenging registered dietitians, you know, your recent conversation about pay on Instagram, that you aren't necessarily kind of putting information out there to be consumed, that it's almost like a magnet. You're putting information out there that kind of attracts other people to share their wisdom and their thoughts, whether it's through storytelling or kind of a challenging question. I love the way you've, you know, kind of built your Instagram community. So I'm so excited to just kind of really pick apart kind of some of these key elements that, you know, while our business may look different, how do we leverage that kind of excitement around what you're doing for our own use? So I'm so excited. So let's kind of just dive in and we'll start picking that apart. So first of all, we're going to get kind of 30,000 foot and get a little bit deeper as we go. But why is Instagram really a good fit for dietitians that are building a business? Why should we even, I'm new to Instagram, why should we be there? Yeah, so Instagram is one of the largest social media platforms with over 800 million active users. It's a great, quick, easy opportunity to build your brand, gain exposure, and really use this platform as an opportunity to gain leads and organic traffic. So it's a fantastic opportunity to position yourself as an expert. Yeah, it's popular. Yes. Very, very popular. Uh, it's, it's a lot of people's favorite platform. And the other, so that would be the number one. The number two is that it's easy. Yeah. You know, and Megan and I have talked about this before with, um, you know, I've been interested in, you know, creating a Facebook group and whatnot. And I just, I'm just not as into Facebook. I know it's important, but to me, there's so many extra buttons and clicks like Instagram, there's a bio, there's a post, like a story, and it's just easy. It's very easy to create a platform. So I guess the barrier, barrier to entry is, is lower. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get out there and just get started, there's less clicks, less options. It's just simple. And I think that's why it's popular. It's, just, it's such a simple platform. In your opinion, you know, as a business owner, Facebook pages, business pages are really, you know, pay to play. There's very little exposure of your business page without paid advertising. I'm really curious if you think Instagram is a little bit less pay to play or what your perspective is there as a kind of a, a business owner. Yeah, so that's a, a good question. I'm sure that Instagram will be pay to play in the future. If that's, you know, I can't, like, I'm not exactly sure, but that's my prediction. But I've been able to to grow, you know, my feed and my business without using any paid advertising yet. And just by creating a community and an engaged experience because I've been able to niche down. Mm -hmm. So it is absolutely possible to generate leads and revenue from Instagram. You just have to have a clear purpose and identify who your niche and know who you're talking to. And then that's going to help you as far as uh, being able to generate leads and then convert them into clients. Yeah, such good stuff there. So you've kind of talked about how it's different than other platforms, but I can tell you going into Instagram about eight months ago, I didn't even have an Instagram account. Like I'd never been on the platform before. And I really felt like a fish out of water as, as a, just a hardcore Facebook user. I was completely, um, I guess, confused by everything that was going on from, you know, stories to live videos in stories versus your feed versus images. I mean, it is, very different than other than other platforms and I guess from your perspective what makes it different for what are some key things that make it different for a business owner or what you like about it yeah so well I really don't use many other platforms so I can't you know strongly compare it to Facebook I, I do use like your Facebook group Mm -hmm. um, but if I, I'm not like big on pages with Facebook or anything, I don't promote my Facebook page, but I, I guess what I can say with Instagram is that it gives you the opportunity to build your brand and engage with other people. And although that is true on other platforms, let me give you specific examples of how I do that with my feed. So maybe that'll be helpful. I think that would be. It'll be a little more specific. Uh oh, looks like we have a little catch with Libby's uh, tech. Oh, she'll be back. <laughs> hey. Hey, you're back. Okay, okay. So I was saying with the examples uh, with, with what makes Instagram a little bit unique. So we've got the stories. They're 15 seconds. And although you can do a continuation of stories, let's say there's uh, different types of stories. So I like the talking head stories. And that would be where you put your phone out and it's just you explaining something 
getting to know your followers. So even though you could do a series, you don't have to just do one 15 second story. So that's the cutoff, the technical cutoff. It gives you a quick uh, in real time opportunity to build the know, like, and trust factor with your followers. And it's again, really low barrier to entry. So even if you don't love videos, even if you're feeling scared or intimidated, it's just so simple. Uh, Instagram creates, it's embedded with the platform for 15 second opportunity for you to build trust with your ideal client, your followers, let them get to know you. And if it's not a video, it's a photo with text. So, you know, I do think that there's more power research shows this with using video. So if mm -hmm. you have the opportunity to quickly say hello or document your life and, and connect what you do and why you do with your, your audience and community, <laughs> that's what can help you drive home your, your main point yeah. messages. I think this is so, so like valuable. Yeah. I think this is really valuable that no like, and trust. I feel having rather being a rather new user to Instagram that I do feel like it's that accelerated opportunity to get to know you have such an opportunity to not necessarily be intimate, but to put more of yourself um, out there quicker and in, with a low barrier. And to me, I feel like I've, yeah. learned a lot more about various dietitians and business people that I follow much more rapidly via Instagram than I have on other platforms. So you kind of touched on storytelling. So you were starting to kind of segue. So let's, let's talk about, get a little bit into more detail about storytelling, because I see a lot of posts that are like, you know, kind of information heavy, or this is about my new blog post or a recipe. What's kind of that big what is storytelling and how is it different from maybe other posts that you see? You're back. <laughs> is that my internet, Megan? It might be. It probably is. Okay. That's okay. I followed you. Okay. So, so you were asking me about the stories. What is you know, storytelling story using storytelling versus kind of the, I don't know, just information that you're kind of shoving out there. Um, how does, how can storytelling, how do you use it? And would you recommend it? And how do you kind of get into being a better storyteller? Yeah. So storytelling is, is really powerful. And if you look at the best speakers in the world, you know, we've got uh, Martin Luther King, and then, you know, Oprah, and you see these famous TED Talks, the second most TED wa watched TED Talk of all time is Simon Sinek. And he tells stories and he has this powerful book called Start With Why. And I analyze TED Talks and the storytelling and what is it that makes these public figures, these influencers unique. And whether it's, you know, a talk for an hour or a talk TED Talk for 18, 15 to 18 minutes, what we find in common with captivating speakers is their ability to engage in, with their community by telling stories. So storytelling, whether it's in the form of a word, so written, it's in the form of a, a video, like you, you know, if, if we were to tell a story or I were to tell a story now, or it could be a photo. Storytelling is a powerful way to build the know, like, and trust factor as we discussed get people to remember your brand. And it's just a really uh, amazing way to connect. So brands re really thrive off of storytelling. So it's a proven fact that you will recognize a brand when there's a story attached. And we as dietitians create our own personal brand. So it's important that we not only have our unique story as to why we're here and how we can help people, but as we tell stories throughout our posts, it's gonna help with engagement and it's gonna help send our message home and it's gonna help connect folks and help us, you know, engage with our community on a stronger, more significant, impactful level. Yeah. And that whole idea of shared experiences, I think when you tell a story and you encourage, you know, other people to share their own journey that, you know, you've you've started that relationship building. I think you keep talking about that know, like, and trust, which that storytelling yeah. kind of opens the door and helps that process accelerate because ultimately, you know, we're on Instagram for a reason, right? We're building a business. We want people to eventually, and it would be nice, purchase our products and services so that know, like, and trust, they're not going to make that decision until they do know, like, and trust you. And that storytelling kind of, you know, allows them to really see you and, you know, this, what you can offer. Yeah, it, it does. And and also, so I talked about mediums of storytelling. So the mediums yes. would be through through text, meaning copy or words. Mm -hmm. So that could be like I use with my captions or right. even in my stories. 
and then there's photos and you know a photo you know they say a photo can be worth a million words if it says meaning that it has a powerful opportunity to tell a story which is why instagram is so powerful but you want to make sure that story connects with your caption and drives home your focus with what you're trying to communicate so there's photo there's text there's video there are many other forms like there's audio so podcasting is a form of storytelling uh, but these are some of the three four main methods specifically the first three that we can use with instagram so that would be photo video and words so you want to you know pick a medium of how you tell the story and there's a you know there's a lot more that goes into this um, and i can give you some references but i've self-taught myself I've self-taught uh, i am self-taught of how to to tell engaging stories both in person and on social so let's kind of stop there and um i think sometimes it's nice to kind of go through um an example of kind of you know, you've got on Instagram, right? You've got your feed, right? You've got your, you've got your posts with your caption, and then you've got maybe an accompanying Instagram um, story that maybe you're, you know, helping to attract people to look at your post or the opposite way. Um, how do you, can you give an example of a recent kind of post Instagram story of kind of how you connected some of that storytelling element? If you. Absolutely. Yeah. So I use storytelling framework, which is a Pixar framework. And then I also, uh, To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. So I've got references for all of how I've come up with this. I actually created a course on it, but I haven't launched it yet uh, to help other folks with storytelling elements. And so what I, my most recent, all my, basically like most of my posts use storytelling elements, I would like to say in the photo, but I'm gonna talk about the text for an example. And so what I did in my last post is I talked about uh, mindset. So I said that there was two dietitians and uh, I gave scenarios. So I talked about how one dietitian, you know, was stumped and had some mindset issues and barriers and she was unable to achieve success because, it, you know, things got in the way versus, oh, hi. Um, um, hold on, hold on one second. Yeah. Uh, can you come back? No problem. Okay. I'm sorry, man. No problem. <laughs> um, this is live. This is that. live. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm in an office, so I apologize for that. I was interrupted. Uh, no worries. Okay. So the, the other, uh, the other dietitian, so one dietitian, so I'm, I'm showcasing two dietitians. In the first case scenario, the dietitian is, um, has roadblocks and is, has challenges and is unable to overcome those challenges and she's held back in her business. And I give specific examples of what those challenges are, those barriers, and they are doing too many things at once, multitasking in our business, trying to check Instagram while eating breakfast, writing a post and talking to friends at the same time. And it sounds silly, but let's be, let's face it, like we've all had those experiences, right? Mm -hmm. And so this particular dietitian who I give a name for, um, in, in my most recent caption, my second to last most recent post, she's held back from succeeding in her business because she's inundated with multitasking versus another dietitian who is able to set her phone on do not disturb during her peak performance hours, which she knows are between the hours of 9 and 11 a.m. So she's able to focus and, and get things done and she moves forward in her business. And so what I'm doing with this particular story, and then I have the picture as well to hone in this message, is I'm explaining a scenario where people can relate with both. And if you strongly fall into the first scenario versus the second, that's okay. But I think it's relatable as dietitians for us to understand how difficult it can be to really focus on tasks and how difficult, how important it is to make progress in our business, because we all want to do that. We all want to go from point right. A to point C. <laughs> and the question is, how can we effectively do that in our lives? And we have to set boundaries and barriers. So my goal is to inspire you to set boundaries and barriers. And the way that I send that message is to draw emotion and experience and have you relate with both of those examples because they are so real. But it's so, it goes back to some of the central things we talk about over and over with selling online, that you're, you know who you're, you know who your audience is, you know their pain points. So, right, you're contrasting kind of a, maybe a current state where people are feeling these pain points, right? And then you're kind of painting that picture, though, through storytelling of kind of that, that transformation 
action that could be achieved. And I think whether you're doing it on a sales page or you're doing it on your Instagram, um, you know, your copy on your your caption, there's an opportunity to, you know, rather than just bullet, bullet, transitioning that into a story. So I just love this. It's so, um, it's a different, a different way. Cause I think right now we're, we're kind of getting overwhelmed with sales pages. I just feel like you see them and you're like, nah, nah, you know, that, that using that in a story for me, there's like some light bulbs going on. So I just love this. <laughs> Great. So, um, so I think you've given us some good examples of resources to get better at storytelling. One, you should follow if you're not already following Libby's um, nutrition business on Instagram, you should be there. And then um, I'll let you give any other resources. And then I want to talk about mistakes that you see people make on Instagram, not necessarily pointing fingers, but just saying when you see it, you kind of go, oh, there was such a better way to do that. So. Yeah. So you want me to start with the mistakes then? Sure, we can transition into there. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about resources. So if you want to so, lump those uh, all together, it's fine. Yeah, so resources for storytelling, is that what you want? Mm -hmm. You mentioned a couple of books. Anything else you want to add there? Yeah, so uh, To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink, and then Pixar Storytelling Framework. Uh, and then also, I have a course. It is not available yet, but if you you know stay tuned and follow back up with me, uh, I will be launching that. I'm not sure exactly when. It is CDR approved, so I just had to go through the those stages, um, and I break down exactly how to story tell. But in the meantime, to sell as human is a good resource, and um, just I think learning and reading uh, stories or listening can really help. So. Uh, doing a little bit of, of studying and reflecting. And, and I would start by picking which medium you like the best. So the word, the voice, or, or video, or, or photo. Um, so the next biggest mistakes. Uh, honestly, Megan, it has to do with what you just said. Uh, talk about light bulb moment. It's identifying your audience and knowing who, know, knowing who you're talking to. So if I could tell, I could tell stories all day, but if I'm not telling a story that resonates or that might make sense or that connects, I'm not going to gain any traction. And at the end of the day, you know, I want to convert the leads into clients. So if you want to convert a lead into client and you have a story, that's great. But if your story doesn't register and solve a problem or identify with a pain point, then that story is not going to resonate. It's not. So so I would say uh, the first the first step is identify your ideal client and build a strong avatar. So an ideal client profile and and most businesses I've read online like fail at really honing in on building their ideal client profile. And I do think that's really important because it can help provide direction and clarity as to who you're talking to. So when you know who you're talking to. Um, and not just who you're talking to, but how you're solving their problem. And not just their problem, their biggest problem. Right. Uh, that's what's going to help connect the storytelling with converting, gaining leads and then turning leads into clients. Yeah, I, I mean, it all starts with knowing who your audience is. And I think it's easy to kind of skip over, you know, to putting out the content that you think that they need. And it's really hard work to... Um, and that it evolves over time, that it's, you probably aren't going to get it 100% right um, out of the gate. And that's, I think that's okay, but that you're constantly getting better. You, you're constantly honing in more on your, you know, who they are and what they need from you. Exactly. Uh, right. So, you know, I don't want to just stay with my story. I want to be relevant as well, assuming that you're beat that you know, people who are listening are B2C, business to consumer. Mm -hmm. Like I'm B2B, just like you, Megan, meaning that we're businesses who help businesses and you might be a business who helps consumers. So let's give an example for that. So the example might be um, that you are a specialist in IBS and you want to, you know, help people with IBS and, you know, symptoms and, and foods that, you know, trigger IBS. So you want to find what the problem is associated with your ideal client, and then you want to address that in a story so that you relate to them. Is the, is an IBS flare an issue when they're out eating restaurants? Let's give an example for that. So the example might be 
So I think identifying, really honing in on the client, their problems, and how you can relate to them is going to help you build a story that's going to increase your engagement. And then more importantly, you have to find out how to convert those engaged organic followers in leads into clients. Yes. And, you know, even in our Facebook group, the topic comes up about engaging posts or emails that all of them you know, come back to kind of that emotional component that we as humans are emotional beings. And while dietitians, we like to be very factual and kind of lay it out there that ultimately we're emotional and that making sure that we make that connection with people's emotions as well. We need the facts, but we also need to take leverage that emotional component, right? Sure. And that's what stories naturally do. A good story is going to involve Character setting conflict solution and it's going to elicit emotions. So the and I have a post coming up about this, an infographic about storytelling. Oh and so what it shows you, it just breaks it down really simply how to tell a story. And you have to absolutely elicit emotions. You want to leave the reader satisfied or the viewer or the follower. So you want the result to be a happy ending, but you have to really register with your with the problems. Like, you know, there has to be a moment. It could be joy, it could be, you know, angst. You know, like again, we'll go back to that IBS. It could be embarrassment. Right. right? So and, and in reference to my story that I mentioned on my recent post, it's frustration, you know, because I help folks in your businesses. And a lot of times we feel frustrated. We're not moving fast enough. We're not gaining enough leads. We're not converting enough clients. And so when I hone in on those frustrated feelings that connects my story with my clients, my ideal clients and my current clients. Right. So I think, you know, whether for me, all of these interviews that I do, I think this is almost, I think this is like my 20th interview that it all comes back to a lot of these core skills, right? That whether we're doing it on a sales page or within our, our actual contents, you know, our, our product that we're selling, our book that ultimately, you know, there's kind of this foundational knowledge that we need. And that's actually very comforting as a, you know, business owner, I am B2B, but I also have a B2C business, a, you know, private practice that ultimately we don't, you don't need to be, it isn't really the shotgun approach. There's really a few key things that if you get really good at them can be leveraged, whether you're on Instagram or you're, you know, even working one-on-one -on -one with your clients. So I really feel like um, it kind of gives us some comfort that um, focusing on knowing who your audience is and storytelling are two really, you know, valuable skills to, to grow and build. Another resource I have is um, I want to mention Chris Ducker. Do you know who he is? He's an, hmm. a, a British uh, yeah. like an entrepreneur, and he says that uh, whether you're B2B or B2C, he wants to remind everybody that you're P2P, and what that means is people to people. So uh, whether you are, um, what I mean by that is whether you are a, a business like Megan, you know, helping other businesses, dietitians, that's business to business. She is still a person helping people. And so, you know, it doesn't matter if you are a business helping businesses or a business helping consumers or like Megan both, you are still connecting with human beings. Mm -hmm. And so you have to remember that and register that and create a business for those humans and remember that they have emotions and find a way to connect with them. And it's okay if you, if it takes, a, you know, if it doesn't happen on the first try, but you have to like be thinking along those, that thought process, like Megan said, those core, everything goes back to those core principles, those core values of knowing your client, addressing their problems and delivering based on their feedback. And I think that's really important to, to create a framework for your stories. Yeah, that's super um, valuable. So I know for me, I feel like Instagram changes so often. There's some new feature. I log in and that little Instagram icon. I'm like, oh no, something else is new. Oh goodness, what is it? Um, but late, I wanted to dig in a little bit more. You know, Instagram stories, now you can ask questions and now you can share the responses. I mean, it changes so often. And it's IGTV. So you are kind of, um, you really have your pulse on what's going on on in Instagram. So 
Um, what are your kind of predictions about IGTV? I'd love to just kind of pick your brain as far as where that's going. And, you know, should we jump in if we're a YouTube user or Facebook video? Where does it really fit? What do you see for IGTV? Well, I love IGTV because it gives us an opportunity to connect on a, on a again, it's a, another opportunity and it's just from a tech side mm -hmm. it gives it's slightly different so i'm going to explain for those of you just as a refresher here the lives the maximum is 60 minutes you can do a live by yourself you could do a live with a collaborator like megan so you can do a split screen live with someone else and that's still the maximum is 60 minute time and then it will cut you off and then with the live people can engage that means people can ask questions and people love that and yeah. that's also why story feature and engage with your followers is the second best way because you want to engage with your community as much as possible so that you can create that community and have them feel involved. So so as just as a refresher, we have the live feature where the, the community is involved. We have stories where the community is involved in ret retro, not retrospect, they're, they're involved after the fact so they can't communicate until you've posted the story. And then IGTV is unique as a feature because it's longer than a story, but it's not as long as a live. So it's 10 minutes maximum, I believe. I think five to 10 minutes, I believe 10. I think it's 10 but, unless you're um, like a major person and you can get more. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, but the difference with the format of IGTV is that you can speak. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, Libby will be back. <laughs> She's done. You can, you can speak. You can speak longer than a story without being without um without the community involvement. So the benefit to that is that if you have something to say longer than fifteen seconds, but you're not you know you're not yet in that phase where you're ready for the community involvement, it gives you the opportunity to to tell a story or engage with the community without having the the direct you know comments comment function. So does that make sense? From yes. Point of view? And I kind of seeing it through that lens of that no like and trust, right? It's this opportunity to connect versus, you know, you hear a lot about what I've heard it compared to is YouTube. And I think right now there's that opportunity to monetize. You know, I, I've heard um, Abby Sharp talk about how, you know, she monetizes. There's a lot of money to be made if you have a large following on YouTube. And I just, you know, like... Yeah. What's your likelihood of, if that's your goal, you know, IGTV doesn't really have that as an opportunity, but it's a great way to get your face in front of your following and more exposure. So I think sometimes there's so many ways to do video in our business. It gets a little bit confusing to say why, what is the purpose of the video? And I think if we can get really clear on why am I doing this video, that then we can see where it fits rather than I need to be here and I need to be there. Why, why am I here? Why? <laughs> yeah. And I also want to remind those are valid, all valid points. I also want to remind folks that I've seen some IGTVs or the title and like people will get covers kind of like highlights. Let me just say this. That's great. Um, content is always, always going to trump production. Mm. So the cool thing about IGTV is that if you get out there and you're relating to your ideal client or your current clients and you're adding value, it doesn't really matter if how well produced the, the video is. All right. So I still don't have a professional camera. I use my iPhone still. And you know what? Like you can make do with what you have. And at the end of the day, those fundamental cores that Megan mentioned with understanding who your ideal client is, that is going to matter more than how many bells and whistles you put on the video. So if IGTV is lower barrier to entry, meaning that it's easier to do than YouTube, although, you know, you could do YouTube as well. I think it's a great opportunity to just find a new format to answer or address any concerns or questions. Um, and so it's, I, it's I great, love the low barrier. It's so easy, right? It's all in one place. I think getting, you know, your YouTube channel and then recording and then editing, there's like 25 steps to do. And then, um, you know, are, are your people on YouTube? What's your final goal, right? Are you do using as inbound? I'm not an expert on, on, on YouTube either. So, yeah. um, I just think, you know, I'm just curious what your thoughts were on, um, IGTV for sure. So that was really helpful. Yeah, so so yeah, I, I like it, and I think that if you, I think that you shouldn't run to the like most available platform or feature 
I think you should like think about the fundamentals and just ask yourself like how clear am I um, how am I reaching out to my ideal clients um, and then look at your stats so mm -hmm. I think that you just need to really think about focusing on your business on, on social and asking yourself are you meeting your goals are you setting smart goals and then instead of jumping to the newest features how can you make the most of the features you're using now because mm. you do get overwhelmed with all the new features you're right so you don't have to jump on it right now but more importantly like gain some clarity with what you're doing mm -hmm. that's good yeah. super super um, great advice and I'm a huge fan of recycling content that while you know it's great to be a content creating tornado which we do need to be but that how you know that your caption you know while we think everyone's gonna be like well she just talked about that in her caption well the fact did they read it all did they see it kind of that same story that same concept you're basically just kind of recycling it and shooting it out in kind of a five different ways rather than coming up with five different content pieces so um, I always see it as yes it's one more thing but how do you just recycle the same thing but in a new way <laughs> yeah. yeah that's great so and and I do want to add I would recommend recycling content that performed well yeah. so you want to if, if something yeah if it serves a purpose addresses concerns and solves problems then you want to recycle that and I'm also a big fan of featuring other users content if they have successfully addressed the pain point that also parallels what you're trying to communicate. So That's at really the end of point. the day, it's all about how can you solve a problem? Right. And I, I've noticed a lot of dietitians help have reservations about that. I don't know if we have time to, to cover that, <laughs> but um, that, I think that just falls in line. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Keep having some, uh, some freeze up there. <laughs> She's back. But no, I wish we would have more time to get into the concept concept of kind of, you know, collaboration over, you know, competition that, um, you know, the opportunity to share um, and build each other up. Um, I think, uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of of collaborating that through supporting each other. It's kind of why I built um, RD to RD that it isn't. Um, you know, it's about creating a way to make it easier for um, dietitians to to buy and sell. Well, yes, I'm in running a business, but it was really first and foremost um, a collaborative community. So we're running out of time, as always, with every single one of these interviews, I could talk all day. Um, but you have a course on Instagram. And I was kind of, before we came on the air, I was saying I went to your landing page for your course on Teachable, which I'll let you talk about. And I kid you not, I read the sales page and I immediately was like, oh my gosh, I was like taking all these notes and saying, I need to be doing this, I need to be doing that. It was, one, it's just a fantastic sales page, so... Everyone should look at it for that reason. And two, amazing content on all of these things that we're talking about, but in really, I'm um, kind of broken down, you know, teaching you just, you know, how to actually make it happen. So tell us about, tell us about your course. Ah! <laughs> She's back. <laughs> So thank you for the, the kind words. I will say uh, my partner in crime, Rachel Paul, is um, phenomenal with written communication. And I'm going to have to, get, I mean, it's a collaborative effort, what we did, but she really like pushed making that sales page so valuable. And she, I mean, she's great. Anytime I, I work with her, like she really focuses on having the content be clear and focused, which translates to her. Her feed. If you follow her, make sure to check out College Nutritionist. She inspires me every day. And so I have to say that getting the sales page to that level took a lot of work. It took a lot of time. And, and Rachel really wanted, um, really wanted the sales page to be clear. And so I, I really agree with you that uh, it's important. And thank you for the feedback about that. I'll, I'll make sure she knows. So how do people because, get, yeah. how do people find, um, they want to check it out? Where do they go? Yeah, so so beat the algorithm in Teachable. And I can um, send you a link after this we'll and, and let you know if you want to check it out. Um, at this point, definitely the sales page. And we've helped you know um, dozens of dietitians uh, with gaining clarity and focus on improving their content. So our course is very 
much content based, which we find unique. So we really help you. We break apart. I have a whole module on avatar. She talks about niching down. We give exa examples of ourselves and others mm -hmm. and it's positive examples. So the, the only time we talk about improvement is when we're talking about our own content because we're very sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. But it's it, we're really breaking down how to use Instagram as a business and not a hobby. And if it is a business for you already, we're going to make it more profitable of a business. And so we talk about both of our experiences and, and what's unique about us is that Rachel and I are very different and even on our sales page video we talk about that how our, our strengths are complementary so she is all about the written communication she tells a story through a photo and it's very impressive and I'm all about the video and the storytelling the communicating and the, the verbal communication so we come together and support each other in different, you know, we help push each other in unique ways and we provide content that's very complimentary. So it's been really exciting to not only create the content and put it out to help dietitians, but to also hear the feedback of folks who've taken the course and they've benefited in a multitude of ways because of our strengths collaborating together. So it's, it's been really fun. Yeah, I um encourage everyone to go check out um, the sales page one you know my nuggets are always if I read the research on selling online right and that having a video on your sales page converts way more than you know people if you don't have a video on your sales page so I'm always someone who's looking analyzing a product and saying oh this is done really well so it's a great example of you know a sales page that's done well and in it awesome um, course as well. So I know you have a freebie that people can download, um, can snag. Tell us a little bit about that and where they can find it. Same place? Yeah. Yes. So can I give you the, the link for that? Mm -hmm. when we're, as soon as we're off, we'll give you the link. So yep. yeah, the freebie is uh, helping you avoid the in top Instagram mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want you to, to all download that, check it out, and then let us know, you know what your favorite tidbit from the freebie was and what you learned from it. And definitely, if you check out the sales page, let us know about that too. Yes. Because um, I do agree with, with Megan, uh, it's important to analyze different content and, and learn how that can apply to you with your business. Yeah. So yeah, I hope you, hope you check out, download the, download the tip sheet. And then also um, check out the sales page and then let me or, or Rachel Paul know if you have any questions and Megan as well. And I'll, I'll send the link as soon as we're off the call. Excellent. Yes. Um, people um, were giving us some good um, thumbs up here. And um, people are really excited about your uh, recent chat you had about pay on Instagram. So really, you know, oh. <laughs> that that people enjoyed that a lot. So thank you, Libby, for taking the time to come on um, the live show today and um, giving a little sneak that two weeks from today, I'm actually on vacation next week, but two weeks from today, we're going to have Erica Jolson on talking about market uh, building a membership site. She um, is kind of the guru of how to kind of build. And again, we're talking about engagement and growth. How do you grow and keep your, you know, your monthly members paying and, and within your membership site? So we're going to talk about that in two weeks. So um, thanks again for being here, Libby and everyone. Um, Beat the Algorithm is um, Libby's course, and you can grab her freebie, which is the top five mistakes to avoid on Instagram. So we will see you all again in a couple weeks. Thank you so much. Okay.